Hi guys, this is Beverly Veer, and you are now listening to Breaking the Generational Cycle of Divorce podcast. So stay tuned. Hi everyone, thank you for tuning in. This is episode two of Breaking the Generational Cycle of Divorce podcast. Today we are going to talk about the ego because it is one of the major culprits the enemy uses to tear relationships and marriages apart. The ego almost claimed my marriage, but God in his mercy helped me out of that mindset. And I want to help you begin to take the necessary steps to repair your ego and change your current mindset so that the way you approach your life and situations can yield the results that are in line with God's promises for your life. Initially, I had planned to discuss the ego from more of a negative standpoint, but the more I prayed and meditated on this topic, the Holy Spirit led me to understand that the ego is only negative because it has been programmed that way. That is not how it was originally intended or designed to operate. So why then has the ego become a negative thing? The ego is what determines how we perceive ourselves and operate in this world. That is why. The Bible tells us in Proverbs 23 verse 7 that as a man thinketh, so is he. This is the reason the enemy uses the ego. He is after our self-perception. The ego is what is responsible for our sense of identity, how we relate to the external world, and how things are perceived. The ego is basically what is responsible for how we exist on this earth. The devil knows that the ego or self-perception is what actualizes your reality. It's a man's sense of self that determines his outcome here on earth. Therefore, he programmed the ego to favor his own agenda instead of God's. The ego has been strategically corrupted and contaminated by the demonic systems and demonic agendas that this world is operating in. And it's been like that long before you or your spouse or even future spouse existed. Remember, this is not about you. So don't take your situation personally. There has been a battle for souls and a battle against the kingdom of light and darkness. Satan knows that he lacks originality and has no power to create anything. So he uses the same principle behind the ego to establish his own agenda of divorce. He gives us a false image of ourselves to behold as the standard. When you hear the word ego, think self-perception and image. We are not wrong for using an image to define our ego because that is actually the principle behind it. However, the enemy capitalizes on our lack of knowledge and subtly changes the image that we are beholding. He does this because he tries to get us to behold ourselves. The confusion is able to seep in because we are applying the principle of image incorrectly. The image that we are supposed to behold as the standard for our ego and sense of self is God's. Many are in search of their identity. Most of us are walking around with a false sense of self or a projected identity. This is what births a corrupted ego. The corrupted ego is a result of an altered or false sense of identity, and it thrives because operating from that altered sense of self gives the illusion of control, and control is just an imitation of true power. And unless you understand this fact, you will continue to be programmed in a way that only aids the devil's agenda for your life and marriage. We live in a world that programs us to process information in a way that only perverts the ego, instead of teaching us how to use it for the purpose in which it was created. And why do you think that is? Well, I'll tell you. The ego is a powerful tool because when you know who you are, 
you can manifest your God-given desires successfully, being that you will move in the direction and manifestation of your purpose. If the devil can trick you to believe that you are something else, you will never move in the direction of who you were created to be. He plants confusion in your identity to keep you bound and operating in this cycle of bondage. I want to encourage you to stop thinking that it's all about you when it's not about you at all. But you do have a major role to play in your time here on earth. The truth is that it is about generations. If he can confuse you and keep you bound in your life, then how do you expect the ones that come after you to grow up with clarity? This is how generations are bound. Because there is a demonic system that is currently operating that no one has successfully replaced with the system of God. If the ego is one of the vehicles the devil capitalizes on to drive his agenda of divorce, then what do you think will happen to your marriage if you keep processing communication, information, and events through a perverted ego? And what do you think will happen if you reverse the perversion and operate through the ego correctly? The ego was made to be a positive thing, but of course the devil perverted it or tainted this tool to benefit his kingdom and agenda. The ego is what determines your reality. The ego is your sense of self, which yields power. The way we perceive has been manipulated. The enemy is behind majority of how we currently see things and process information. Yet he keeps us deceived to think the battle lies in the physical realm. The Bible teaches us in Ephesians 6 verse 12 that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And if this is the case, then the battle is in the spiritual realm. So why do we fight all the battles here in this physical realm? How have we been so deceived and our perception so altered that every problem we face is directed at our spouses or external factors in the physical realm. We are trained to notice flaws, issues, problems, and red flags, but never the spirits and system operating behind it that is 1000% responsible. The physical realm may alert you that something is wrong in the spiritual realm, but it is the spiritual realm where true breakthrough, solutions, deliverance, and transformation happens. And if you keep fighting and approaching things physically, especially each other, you will lose every time. I want to encourage you to ask God for his eyes and his mind. Then you will be aware that 100% of the physical realm is just a byproduct of the spiritual realm. There are spirits behind each and everything done here on earth. Spirits don't have a body. That is why they need to influence yours to either fulfill the agenda of God or the agenda of Satan. The battle of the kingdom is the real reason behind every single thing you will ever face on this earth. Spirits are after bodies. You might look around and wonder why the world is the way that it is. You might even ask yourself, what happened to this world? Well, I have one word for you, people. It is a way of thinking that manifested the earth to be like this. And those thoughts were influenced by spirits. Christ said, pray for your enemies because he had this understanding. It is time to set your loved ones free from being instruments of Satan. I'm going to briefly discuss the system and programming of this world that is currently pushing the agenda of divorce. If you haven't read my book, Breaking the Generational Cycle of Divorce Part 1, I highly suggest that you do so that you will have a deeper understanding of systems and programming. But I will touch on it briefly. Every program needs a system to run it. In this case, the program is divorce, and the system is the ego. With a corrupt ego, the devil doesn't need to constantly attack you, because you are strategically set up to operate the program of divorce by your own hands, as well as make poor or costly decisions with your current mindset. Programming is not something you're even conscious or aware of. 
it happens in your subconscious and it's like that by design because you do not consciously think about your ego but when certain situations arise the way it is programmed will surface when you continue to allow this version of your ego to be responsible for your outcomes you will be at a loss every time until you reprogram it to work for you not against you the ego is what is responsible for the manifestation of your reality and it can hinder the reality you want or it can prosper it but the choice is yours because we are not aware of this subconscious programming we may never think that we need to change so we try to change everything and everyone else but regardless of our efforts our outcome is being repeated signifying that something is definitely wrong that is why we must not be deceived the ego is the culprit when you realize that your current mindset right now is responsible for your outcome in life then you will start having progress in your life the thing is i always try to warn people because when you try to break out of that mindset the attacks become stronger in attempt to reset you in order to keep you bound in that mindset and state of operation that is why you must stand your ground until you finally break out because that's just the enemy's desperate attempt to keep you in bondage and discourage you from breaking free that is why the bible says in ephesians 6 verse 13 when you have done all you can to stand still stand when you stand your ground by the power of the holy spirit you will break out of bondage it's a must remember the agenda or program of divorce cannot be accomplished without a means or a vehicle for it to ride on and that's where the ego comes in without your corrupted or perverted ego the program of divorce cannot be executed it will collapse please understand that a program cannot operate on its own it needs a system to push or drive it a program is the end goal and the system is the means on which the goal is accomplished even though the ego has indeed been corrupted and has become a tool that drives relationships and marriages apart most teachings and marital resources fuel it This is to keep us relating with our husbands or spouses through fear and its projections rather than in the way God commanded. One approach brings results, the other keeps the cycle of divorce and brokenness going intentionally or unintentionally. It hurts to know that Christians who are going for counseling are also receiving ego-based teachings that will eventually accomplish the program of divorce. The sad thing is that the people we go to for guidance and counseling are most likely programmed too. We must start reprogramming and unlearning because our beliefs determine the course of our actions. The Bible speaks a lot about self and identity because this is the key to manifestation. That is why the devil infiltrated that and tries to give you a different identity and keeps you focused on yourself instead of God. 1 Peter 2 verse 9 tells us that we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, and encourages us to praise God who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. God has called us out of our dark minds, out of our manipulated minds, out of our corrupt minds because that is the reason behind our actions. That is what has manifested this reality of pain, of darkness, of evil. Light happens in your mind, then your actions will resonate with the light that is taking place within you. It is the truth and light of God that conquers your old way of thinking so that you can have a new way of living. A lot of you do not believe that all things can become new for your situation and all things can become new for your life and for your marriage, but you must first renew your mind. Ephesians 4 verse 22 to 25 says that we should put off concerning the former conversation the old man which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts and be renewed in the spirit of your mind and that we put on the new man 
which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. If you notice, the Bible keeps telling us to put on a new mind or renew our mind. And why do you think that is? Why do you think the Bible keeps suggesting this? It's because God knows the amount of perversion that has happened in the way we process information and the way we relate with one another in this world. The devil has done a lot of work over eras to taint the ego. And yes, the Bible has made efforts to show us how the ego has been corrupted and has given us strategies and knowledge to incorporate these principles to subdue the perverted systems in our world. Unfortunately, God's system, although superior, is not the system that is currently operating in the world today. Everyone seems to be repeating the same ancient cycles through corrupt and limited mentalities. We must put on a new self and a new man by renewing our minds so that we can begin to process things with a new mind, a healed mind. That is the only way to see with clarity. Romans 12 verse 2 says, Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Which clearly shows us the will of God for our lives is attainable because we are asked to prove it. A lot of us jump to the latter part of this verse, but we skip over the part where he says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That is the only way to live in the perfect will of God. Colossians 3 verse 10 encourages us to put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created us. This verse gets me fired up because not only are we supposed to renew our minds, but we are supposed to renew it in knowledge after the image, ego, image of him that created us. It takes an act of the Holy Spirit and your deliberate effort to heal and cleanse your ego. The first thing you must do is recognize that the image that is being presented to you right now as a standard is false. Your way of thinking is false. And you must now understand that your way of thinking is what is producing the actions that is leading to your downfall and leading you to divorce. The image you must use when cleansing your ego is the image of God. You need to study God, his attributes, his character, what he says about you, who he calls you, and who he created you to be. That is where your sense of identity comes from. Then you will know who you are. And that image has now become your ego. And that is where you should operate from. When you start to do this, you will now begin to see areas where the enemy infiltrated and corrupted and manipulated your thought process, knowing that the way you think produces the actions that you take. You will see how those actions do not align with the actions and character and the thought process of God for your life. The more you study God, the more you study his nature and his character, you will see yourself and you will begin to understand why he said by himself that you were created in his image and likeness. For God to say that you are created in his own image and likeness is one of the most powerful weapons that has ever been revealed, yet nobody utilizes this. In fact, the last time we really saw it utilized was when Jesus was here. Through demonic programming, we adopted the image of Satan and allowed that to be our identity and partnered subconsciously to multiply darkness and brokenness upon the face of the earth through our corrupted egos. And the reason why I said we adopted the enemy's image is because if we worship God through words and worship Satan through our actions, then who wins? Let me ask you this. Which kingdom benefits from your actions? Who gets the win in your life? Like I said before, and I'll most likely always say in my podcasts, <laughs> spirits need bodies and they penetrate through riding on the contaminated ego to establish their will here on earth. They are here to multiply darkness upon this earth, but of course they cannot do that without bodies. 
Make up your mind that no one under your watch will be taken advantage of by these demonic spirits or darkness to multiply evil. If spirits want to attack you, they will influence people or bodies around you to hurt you, to destabilize or break you down. Most of us still do not realize that the enemy uses the closest people to us, especially our spouses, if they yield their mind to the devil knowingly or unknowingly. The reason I said unknowingly is many of you still cannot differentiate between your own thoughts and the influence thoughts of the enemy. And that is what the enemy hides behind because he knows you can't tell the difference since it's all happening in your mind. Your sense of self is what he hides behind to establish his will through your ego. A flood of thoughts rush through your mind every day, and the more it happens, the more you think that it is you, and you begin to shape your life in the form and in the direction of those thoughts until you have taken on a totally false and contrary identity to the one God gave you, an identity that is now in line with the enemy's agenda for your life. The devil rarely lies to you. I almost want to say he never lies because he uses deception. He tricks you. Lies are very obvious and there is nothing obvious about Satan. And this is why a lot of people cannot find the enemy because he hides under the guise of yourself. He is disguised as your inner thoughts or your ego and he succeeds because many don't even know who they are, especially in God. And without knowing yourself, how can you then differentiate which thoughts are yours and which thoughts aren't? Without having God as your standard, the devil tricks you to believe that his projected desires are your own desires. And when he gets you to believe this by causing you to constantly meditate on these thoughts and these images that he keeps putting in your mind, before you know it, you'll act on it. And most times, subconsciously, because he has worked persistently on your mind to enter your subconscious. Statistically speaking, your subconscious mind is responsible for 95% of your actions. So in other words, the enemy is responsible for 95% of your actions because he has control of your subconscious mind without you even knowing it. So you keep repeating these cycles, you keep repeating these strategies and these actions, and before you know it, you're too far gone. Just because it came into your mind does not mean it came from you. It all starts in the mind. The battlefield is in the mind. Thoughts have the ability to race through your mind day and night, and it is your ego, your sense of self, your perception that deciphers which thoughts become actions and which stay dormant or never see the light of day. That is why the enemy wants it so bad. That is how he pushes his agenda. Before you know it, you don't know who you are anymore. You're battling anxiety, depression, suicide, and all sorts of things that ordinarily should have never been in your life because you're in too deep. This happens to a lot of people, especially in marriage. This is why divorce happens. That is how people become perfect strangers in marriage. But the good news is that we can get ahead of it with the power and the help of God through His Holy Spirit. There is absolutely no way you can identify with any of the thoughts the devil suggests to you when you are deeply rooted in God and when you know who you are in Him. That's why the devil must first manipulate your reality and get you to believe in a false identity, especially through fear, to pervert the ego. And without this knowledge, your ego will automatically respond in a way that favors the program of divorce. Divorce may not happen immediately, but with repeated instances and repeated application of the corrupted ego, then it will eventually get there. Your ego should be a vehicle for God's agenda. It should be reprogrammed and renewed into establishing God's will on this earth. When you renew your ego, you will be able to filter between demonic influence and your own thoughts by using the word of God. You will be able to say, wait a minute, this thought is not mine. And soon there will be a clear distinction and separation between you and the enemy in your mind 
and you will easily be able to fish him out and send him packing instead of your spouse. Contrary to what we've all been taught, most things about the enemy's approach is subtle and strategic. We've been taught to identify the lies, so we go years and years watching for the very obvious and blatant lies. Meanwhile, the enemy disguises himself as our loved ones, or even our own selves, and tricks us. We are programmed to look for lies, not deception. That is why it is hard to identify real from the counterfeit and tricks from the truth. Most of us are still operating in this world with a false sense of self. That is why there is an error in the way we approach red flags. In my book, Breaking the Generational Cycle of Divorce, I speak on how what we call a person's true colors is only the programming they've received from existing in this world. That is not their true God-given essence. They have yet to tap into that because they have become a product of their circumstances and projected reality. It takes the Holy Spirit to break them out of their current mindset and state of operating into the version that God created them to be. And listen, I'm just going to digress <laughs> just a little bit. I'm just so touched by this. It's personal for me because I would have written my husband off. This man was operating based on the programming from this world. And if I counted the red flags, I would have missed it. But that man is mine. He is for me. He is my husband. It takes the power of God. It takes the instruction of the Holy Spirit to see beyond the programming of this world. Or else you're going to keep missing it. And because I obeyed, I was able to work with God to allow my husband to break out of the programming of this world. Now this man is operating for God's kingdom. But many of us do not want to do this part. We just want the man that is God-fearing, that is leader. I'm happy for those that it happened that way for, but my case was not like that. And I know a lot of you really need to hear this because I don't want you to miss your spouse. It takes the eyes of the Holy Spirit to identify the facade of the enemy. We must pray for the spirit of discernment in order to be properly equipped. We must stop fighting the obvious. It's always a decoy. Your real enemy is the devil, not your spouse. With a healed ego, you will focus on targeting the spirits behind the person, not the person. Your healed ego allows you to operate from the realm of divinity. You will not take anything personal once you understand this principle. For instance, Jesus rebuked Satan, not Peter, in Matthew 16, verse 23. We must pray for our loved ones that the devil does not capitalize on their vulnerabilities and lack of knowledge to be used as an agent in his demonic kingdom. I know this is a lot of information to take in, but you need to know that processing through your ego's current state will only be to your detriment. It only focuses on the physical approaches and never consults God who is spirit because 10 times out of 10, it'll clash. Our ways are not God's ways and our thoughts are not his thoughts. So we must learn to align our thoughts with God's so that our ways can now be in line with God's way. That is how we can achieve true prosperity in life and in our marriages, by looking at things through his eyes and developing our ego to be in line with the divine. Jesus was the spiritual realm crystallized. That is how we also ought to be. We must battle to control our minds because whoever has the mind has the body. If anyone has any questions, please reach out. I really want you to understand these principles so that you can apply them in your life to have results. So when life events happen, we measure them up to our ego. And right now, it's most likely programmed with pride. How is it that the image of pride, an image that God resists and opposes, has become our constant state of operating, especially in marriage. For God to resist us is exactly what the enemy needs so that he can have his way in our lives. James 4 verse 6 tells us that God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. The Holy Spirit cannot reside or operate where God is resisting or opposing. You can pray night and day, but as long as you're acting out of pride, <laughs> Good luck. 
he ain't coming. <laughs> Pride is an atmosphere that God will not reside in. Take it from me. Take it from me. <laughs> he not gonna come. Take it from me. I know this firsthand. Pride is a behavior and a characteristic that you really cannot afford to have because you need the Holy Spirit to reside in your home. His power present in your home is what keeps the enemy away. And if you are operating in pride, and if pride has taken the throne in your home, then you are keeping God away and leaving your home open and vulnerable to the attacks of the enemy. Needless to say, anyone operating from this current state of ego cannot receive from God and cannot manifest anything other than the devil's will for their life. Every action taken out of pride will only be to your disadvantage. It will cost you every single time. Don't listen to those memes. <laughs> woo, woo. Don't listen, don't listen, don't listen. Pride will sit there and have you thinking that you are doing this to punish the person when in reality, you are punishing yourself and your destiny. The true purpose of the ego is to put on the identity of the divine and measure events through that identity in order to manifest the reality that lines up with God's plan and purpose for your life. Sadly, we use our ego to lead us further into the enemy's agenda. Your ego should reflect the image and likeness of God, but you have acquired an altered sense of self and your ego is programmed to work against you and you're not even aware of this you keep acting out of pride and you don't even see how it's costing you because your mindset and your rationale of your actions justify you listen you're not wrong to know what you deserve but what image have you made the standard is it god's image because if you take the image of God and line it up with your actions, light will shine on your actions and you will know that you need to stop these behaviors because it's only costing you. You measure your life and your ego to his image and watch everything change. Are you using God as a standard or are you using the false imitation of your power and your identity and your higher self? All of that is just total deception. We get into trouble every time we try to discover our true self outside of God. Why do we try to find our identity outside of God when he is the one who created us? I did mention in my book that the ego isn't on our side and this is because of how it is currently programmed. But with reprogramming, it can work in your favor to bring the manifestation of God into your life and marital home. I think a lot of the teachings causes us to resist the ego. And in my opinion, it really should have been teaching us to purify and reprogram the ego based on the word of God. Your ego plays a key and fundamental role in manifesting God's will here upon the earth because you must know who you are for it to work and you must know who God is for it to work. So if we are always taught to resist our ego because our ego is evil and our ego is bad and it's filled with pride and it's working against us, I mean, that might be true for now, but that is not permanent. That all can be reversed through purification and through the power of the Holy Spirit. Pride is not your ego, but pride infiltrated your ego. There is a profound difference. So when you remove the pride from your ego, what you have done is cleansed your ego from that pride and God will no longer resist you. But you must go a step further into now retraining your ego to be one that is filled with the Holy Spirit and operates with humility so that you can obtain grace from God. Although most teachers meant well and mean well, I really do believe that the enemy somehow perverted their approach to keep us all bound in a cycle and a system that makes God's way seem faulty because they removed some knowledge or insights that are important pieces to the puzzle due to their own mental limitations, limited understanding, or just outright manipulation. Knowing that applying these principles without the key pieces for understanding will not bring results. 
When we don't have the results, we abandon God's way out of frustration. That is why the Holy Spirit is key. He gives you all the pieces to the puzzle so that you can actualize your destiny and God's will for your life. You must utilize the help of the Holy Spirit to achieve God's will in its fullness for your life. Since it's your sense of self that pushes you to take action, imagine how your life will be if you act based on your correct and uncorrupted sense of self. See, the enemy programmed your ego with limitations that only allow you to see what he wants you to see. He manipulates you through your ego because it's the lens we use to interpret situations and it is responsible for how we then respond. Most of the time, the way you interpret situations is really what hinders you. He knows that if you see the whole picture, you will never choose his way. I just thought to say that the devil's agenda is not only contrary to God, it is contrary to you. So you have no business acting in ways that favor the enemy. The devil has given you his image of pride and utter rebellion without you even being aware. When you hear rebellion, you know, because this was me, you think, oh my gosh, I'm not rebellious. There is no way I'm rebellious. Like we think it's something that's so extreme, but rebellion is as simple as disobedience. I mean, even the slightest ounce of disobedience to God is rebellion. My question becomes, how can you operate marriage, something that God created with the devil's image and mindset and expect it to work? How in the world? And this is me talking like I got it all figured out. <laughs> I'm still on this journey to people, but the realization rocked me because how in the world can I be operating in this way that reflects only the devil's image and his actions and expect the miraculous God to come and fix my marriage? Like, how could you possibly expect this current approach to not end in divorce? We are planting seeds of discord and we just expect the harvest of our marriage to be longevity. How does that work? This is how the enemy traps us in a cycle. We really think these behaviors are from us, but that is why I said cleanse your ego. Let your ego have the image of God as a standard because with the image of God as a standard, your actions will reflect his character and his nature and then you will get longevity in marriage and success and prosperity in your life. The enemy has programmed our minds and egos to repeat the same thought process and strategies. And then we become frustrated. Like we keep repeating the same thought process and strategies every time certain situations arise and then we want different results. He makes you believe that the problem is external. You think it's everyone else. You really just need to renew your own mind first according to the word of God and get the devil out of there so that at least one of you can see clearly. Then you can start identifying and breaking the strongholds in your mind that the devil created and has been robbing families of their destiny for generations. I'm showing you all this so that you can be aware of the enemy's schemes. In 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11, the Bible encourages us to not be ignorant of the devices of the enemy. We must know how he operates so that he will not have any advantage or victory in our lives or in our marriages. But it all comes down to your sense of self. Who do you know that you are? Because if you believe that you are God's and you are in his image and likeness, there is no way you can act in a way that is contrary to that understanding, regardless of the situation. Some of us who have not developed our sense of self will just accept anything because there's actually no standard or an image to measure it up to. So they end up thinking that anything that happens is God's will and is supposed to happen and they just receive it and that becomes their cycle of bondage. Clearly, they don't understand that our adversary, the devil, roams about the face of the earth seeking whom he will devour. Like how do you still blame God when certain things happen? Or how do you just accept it as God's will? Like, I, I just don't know. The thoughts of God towards us are thoughts of good and not of evil, 
to bring us to an expected end. The psalmist tells us that God's thoughts are precious towards us. The Bible says, who is man? That God is so mindful of us. God wants us all to prosper. It is the devil that kills, steals, and destroys and roams about the earth, devouring people, devouring their marriages, devouring their health, devouring their finances. He looks for those that are weak, idle, vulnerable, empty, broken, and those that have opened the portals for him to just say, come on, come and take. We just have to pray to God for mercy, really, and plead the blood of Jesus because who... The enemy has had his way in the lives of many because they neglect the principles of God. Yet they blame God when the devil strikes. Many have left their homes wide open for the devil to steal from their marriage and kill it. Yet they ask God, where is your faithfulness? You must develop your sense of self or ego according to the word of God to be able to identify that there are certain things that should not be happening to you as a child of God. You must stand on this reality because this is who you are. You are the image and likeness of God. Knowing this will help you understand that there are actions you should not even be affiliated with. That is why the enemy either likes to give you an altered version of yourself or keep you in confusion about yourself. Because as long as you are confused, you cannot make any impact for God's kingdom whatsoever. For me, this realization was terrifying because how can you literally all your life be programmed without even knowing it? Like my awakening <laughs> was dramatic. I could not believe it. All this while, I was programmed without being aware of it. And I'm here to tell everyone that the way you act is based on the programming that you've all received in your life. And it's all in support of the devil's agenda. This is why the Bible asks us to be born again, because we have to unlearn all of that programming and consciously implement characteristics and behaviors that are pro-God until it becomes our subconscious and until a godly system becomes our programming. I really think that what the Bible refers to as the flesh is synonymous to one's way of thinking because thoughts yield actions, right? And demon spirits love to feed off human bodies. And they do this by attaching and infiltrating and hijacking thought patterns with certain lusts and desires that will ultimately lead to death. So dying to your flesh, like the Bible asks us to do, is really just changing the way you think. You have to be born again, which means unlearning. Being born again means unlearn. That is the only way you can be like a child again. Because you cannot literally, as an adult, <laughs> physically be born again. It is your mind that must be reborn. So whether you're single, whether you are married, now is the time to start reprogramming your ego so that it can work for you in prospering your marriage instead of working against you to tear it apart. I know most of you are tired. You've done things your way for a very long time. You've bowed to your current ego, and that's where the devil wants to keep you so that you can manifest his desire for your life, which is divorce. I'm here to beg you, try this way. It is necessary that you know this because you can change your mindset. You can change your approach by using God's word as a standard. He created you. He knows you. He knows why he created you. He knows your purpose. He knows who you are in him. So seek God. Let him lead you. Let his spirit be in your marriage. I'm telling you without the spirit of God in your marriage, divorce will always be around the corner because the enemy will stop at nothing to tear godly marriages apart. The only way to have victory is by putting God back in your marriage. All right, looks like we are concluding now and I hope this topic has helped you all. I want to encourage you to listen to this again so that you can really understand the message and the revelation in this podcast. I just want to say thank you so much. It is always a blessing to be able to speak 
speak with you and to be able to pour into your lives. And if you learned from this podcast and if it touched you, please share it. Somebody you know needs to hear this message. And I just want to thank God, all glory to God. This knowledge and wisdom does not come from me, but it comes from God's Holy Spirit. And this is the understanding he gave me and is still giving me that is helping me in my marriage. And I just thought, you know, I need to share this with you. I need you to know that there's another side to pain, that you can have prosperity in marriage. It only hurts when you resist. It only hurts when you disobey. Please share this message to help save somebody's future or current marriage or even their life. God bless you. Love you guys. Mwah. Oh,